I was in the armed forces as a, a, a very young officer for about eight, ten years. Um, and I was uh, on a short service commission, which effectively means, uh, you know, if a gig economy, I didn't know this at the time, but I was um, made redundant without any redundancy pay. I was actually just summarily dismissed mm. because they decided to remodel and reshape the armed forces for the future. And this goes on all the time. So I don't really buy the argument that you can't change someone's terms and conditions when the, the current climate technology advances, things are happening and changing all the time. No, but you, you, you said you didn't realise what your terms and conditions were. Well, I was 19 when I signed up for the army. Yes. I, I got commissioned as an officer. I thought I was in for life, and I committed my life to the army. I went on some pretty horrendous operational tours. Uh, I no pay rises, no no ability to strike, no crown immunity. Yes. No, all these things happened. And, to the and no forces, rights and no or really no rights them. or protections when they decided to get rid of you. So no, I, no, I don't, I'm not quite I, sure what you're. Are you on two weeks' notice? Yes, I, I know that's ra- that's that's appalling. Are you suggesting yeah. that because that happened to you, you're in favour of it happening to other people? No, but what, what, I'm what are you suggesting people, then? I'm suggesting that things do change and you have to sit down there at the table and negotiate and compromise but both that, sides. That, that's what they're doing. You didn't have that right. And Liz, no, Truss, Liz Truss is pledging to take that right away. No, I, and, I, and I don't agree with that. But what I do agree with is the idea that there, there are reasonable things happening right now that people are making big sacrifices for in the private sector as well. So the idea of just saying we're going to strike and make your lives a misery unless you give us more money, when I then and I, I may not just, be just missing want to, they just the want figures. to pay they just want a pay rise that recognises inflation because if they don't get a pay rise that, that, that outstrips that. inflation, then every year they're earning less than the year before. So in the private sector, I've not had a pay rise for eight years. You do are doing that thing, Paul. Let's not let Paul, mate. You you are you may not realise it, but you are very much, and I'm very grateful to you for ringing in because I think you speak for millions. You're jealous. Uh, not so much. What I am no, concerned about absolutely is and, and categorically. This, no, you're you're jealous. You you're literally telling me that you got shafted yeah. by your employer in the past, so you don't see why these employees should have any right of recourse with their employees. They should suck it up just like you had to. And now you're telling me that in your current working life, you don't have protections. You don't have a union speaking up for you. So why the hell should the railway workers have one? No, no, honestly, no, I don't believe they shouldn't have a union, but I believe the union are wielding too much power in the sense that they could bring the country to its knees. Pretty so what, much. How much will. power do you think they should be allowed to have, Paul? Sufficient to sit around the table and negotiate and compromise on behalf of their members. And if the employer doesn't deal. compromise? Say again? If the employer doesn't compromise, then what should they be allowed to do? Then, then there should be recourse to a higher body, to an arbitration committee that says you're being unreasonable. The, I, government's I refusing, wanna... the government's refusing to speak to the unions. And they're at fault as well. We shouldn't be voting so, for no, a government no, that, that, that don't sit well, around the table. Unfortunately, that's really... the government we've got, and that's the government that the unions have to that. deal with. So, yeah. so if they can't go on strike... What can they do to stop employers treating them like you were treated as a young man? Well, I'm, I'm not just, sure. Just Paul pause for a minute. Just think about the question, Paul. Is... No, wait, because I, I, okay. I don't want the railway workers okay. to be treated like you were when you were slung out of the army. No, I agree. All I right. Agree. So if they're going to do that to a workforce, what can the union do to stop it from happening? Well, I, I mean, you know, the only recourse other than strike action would be some case of law that protects them, for, that forces the government to get round the table and negotiate. Liz Truss, I just played you a clip of Liz Truss promising to water down the law that currently protects workers. So in the world we live in, yeah. a trade union that wants to protect its members from being treated in the way you were treated as a young man, what weapon would you allow them to have? Well, I think that, I think we have enough frameworks and structures in our country now to but we clearly have don't, to sit Paul. around the table and no, but negotiate. But we, we clearly don't, because that is what they are doing. So when so the employer... You keep repeating court, yourself, stop, stop because you know, you, know, you know, Paul, that the yeah. only truly meaningful recourse they have is industrial action. And, and, and you've realised that in the course of this conversation. And I, and I don't want to embarrass you by labouring the point... But that, yeah. that is 
precisely what we've been talking about all morning because you didn't get looked after when you felt you should have been you've been turned into a person who doesn't think other people should be looked after either because you can talk all you like about arbitration or compromises or legislative frameworks this is a government and Liz Truss's government is is clearly going to be committed to this that wants to strip away the protections that they already have and you've been persuaded that that's a good idea largely because you don't have any yourself uh, okay, I, I, yeah, I think it's slight, slightly over pegging it there, James. I don't believe they should. You know, have everyone's unions. listening. That there don't should you? be a, a structure where the government don't have the ability to say we're not talking to you, and that the, the unions don't have a retort to say, well, in that case we're going on strike. If that's the only option, there that's not adult. That's not that's not sensible. We need to have a different kind of structure that well, says. Well, there, no, you see, you're, you're, you're so nearly, driver. you're so nearly there. Then, so I mean, the, yeah. here's the point: if if an employer is as inconsiderate and as unreasonable as the army was to you, what could, if all of you and your comrades were in an organisation dedicated to protecting you and your comrades from unfair employment practices, from uh, exploitative employment practices, what could you do to fight back? Yeah, OK, so let me just be absolutely clear. I, I don't think I was exploited in that sense. I mean, I was on a contract that I should have known better. I should have known at 19 what if, my if, employment if you, contract was. Yeah, so, my but what, point of that, James, what, though, was... What, you what could you all have game. done collectively together to resist unfair treatment? What would have been the most effective weapon in your arsenal? An unfair treatment from your employer directed at a small number of your comrades but you're all going to join forces to resist it what would be the most effective way of resisting it paul well i don't agree with it but it would have been to lay down our weapons and, and not do what we were signed up to do it would be to completely yeah to, don't turn up to work so you, you so so the only the recourse risk. the only recourse yeah. to justice that you had is something that you don't agree with I mean, the army is a special case, of course, but you wouldn't if, extend if that to railway if your workers. If father's on an operating table and all the surgeons go on strike, what do you do? Do you think, oh, that's fine, they need, they need more money because they're, they're working really hard, but my dad just died of a heart attack on an operating table. I don't, that's where I don't agree. If nurses okay. can go well, on you, strike... We both know, don't we, that, that they're not going to go out on strike in the middle of an operation, Paul. So, uh, well, again, okay, I, I, don't want to em- I, don't, I, don't want em- I don't want to embarrass you, but we're talking about railway workers today. And, yeah, you, have, okay. and you have, and I think still I'm not going to be able to quite crack the final nut here, but your opposition to industrial action is built upon envy because you don't have recourse to those sorts of protections and rights. And here's the thing that perhaps I should have said a little earlier. I think you deserve them too. Hmm. No, I'm not sure. That, okay, I'm not sure that would work with the armed forces. If they you're are not in the armed forces, and... Paul. They threw you out because you didn't understand your terms and conditions, and you didn't have a union. I think you deserve them too. And and the mystery okay. of today's phone in is why you don't think you deserve them. Well, but you know, you sign up to a job, you do the job as best as you can. Things do change, and you have to adapt. And if that means you need less soldiers and less officers. Then some have to go. You're not, and you're I not in the army all anymore. Went. No, but are you referring back to that situation? No, I I'm not. I'm talking about you to today. Soldiers and today, right now, I think you deserve the protection and the dignity that a union can afford. And I'm very, very sorry that you don't have it. OK. Can I make one very final point? Because I did say two. And the, the last one is this. And I, I may have the exact figures wrong. But my understanding is a junior doctor does about seven years worth of training and comes out on about 40 grand a year as a junior doctor in a in a ward somewhere something like that i'm, I'm led to believe and, and you, you may tell me it's a lot less or a lot, lot more but i'm pretty sure it's about 40 grand well, and, your point and as i understand is, it an average train driver's on about 48 oh, grand we've, they already, want more. we've already covered this number one the train drivers aren't on strike today and number two that is an argument for paying doctors more not for paying railway workers less paul why is it not the other way around? Then? Why is it not that the doctors are, paying, are getting enough and the train drivers are getting too much? How, how is that not a valid argument? Because, because the doctors don't have the uh, union strength that the railway workers have. And just like you, I wish they did, just like I wish you did. Do you see it now? It's £48,000 the right you amount get it? of money you just made that number. You just, you backwards just, and drive a train. Oh, is and that, now you're getting that. So now we're, going down, now we're going down the Rupert Murdoch rule, rule. I mean, what do you want me to do? Remind you of the recent rail disasters where people have died? 
Well, you no, pretend that. that it's a you pretend that it's a trivial job. Just just the, accept no, no, the generous. Not, no, no, James. No, I'm the, not saying just it's trivial, accept the generous and enough, what you are. You're just saying pushing a lever no. all day long. That is a yeah, description of, of something trivial. All right, I've done my best. James, I've done do my best, it. Paul. I wish that you had access to the sort of rights and protections that railway workers have. 